had another frock. No worries, Lady Parker. I think we can help you with that. What's up, y'all? Today, we are making a dress inspired by the Regency era. You know, the time of Pride and Prejudice and Bridgerton. For this project, we are using a cotton fabric, tool, Velcro, a needle and thread that matches our fabric, a sewing machine, although this can be done by hand, and our pattern. Our patterns are drawn by hand, so imperfections may exist, but they're free, so hey. So let's get started. This fabric is a fat quarter I bought off of Amazon. It measures 18 inches by 21. I've already folded it in half and ironed it flat. I thought the print was going to be a lot smaller, but you know, when buying online, sometimes you just never know. But I still think it's a nice fabric, so we're gonna use it for our dress. Our pattern has five pieces, and we will make it available on our blog, myfroggystuff.blogspot.com. After printing, make sure that the scale matches up my one inch to the ruler's one inch. Once everything is good, cut out the pattern right on the line, place the pattern for the skirt on the fabric right on the fold, use pins to hold it in place. This is the front of the dress. We are gonna place this on the fold as well. For the sleeves, we need to cut two and pay attention to the little arrow. You want it to go in the same direction as the grain of the fabric. And then we have the back of the dress. We need to cut two of those as well. For the inner facing, I'm gonna lay that on tool and cut it out. I did cut a little more than I needed and I can always trim this later. Carefully cut out the fabric for this pattern, we included notches. They are not fun to cut out, but they will totally come in handy when we are lining things up. So cut carefully. Once everything has been cut out, make sure you don't lose your interfacing because it's kind of a uh, see-through. So yeah, hang on to that. We are going to start sewing the bodice, which is this piece right here that was cut on the fold. Remove the pattern, open it up, we are going to sew the darts first. So we're gonna grab that, fold it in half, lining up the raw edges, and sew a fourth of an inch going straight across. Using a straight stitch. Repeat on the other side. I like to lock my stitches, which means I go back and forth at the beginning of sewing and then I go back and forth at the end. If you cannot lock your stitches, you can always just take the thread and tie a knot. And I just like to do this to make sure it doesn't like come undone later. Trim off the excess thread. Then we're gonna fold our darts over. You want them facing the center. And let's go and iron this flat. The iron is totally your best friend. Take the back of the bodice, remove the pattern. We have two separate pieces that are mirror images of one another. Take one, lay it good side to good side on the front of the bodice lining up the notches and the side right here. Sew a straight line going all the way across. I am going to use my sewing machine. However, if you are worried that your machine is going to eat this, then I would just sew it by hand. And you can also hold onto the thread from the other side to help guide it through. Then sew a straight line to attach the shoulder. Repeat on the other side. Then let's open those seams and iron them flat. Then flip it over so the good side is facing up. Take the tool interfacing. You can use fabric if you like. However, it just creates a little bit more bulk. I'm going with the tool because it's really thin and it has a little bit of stretch to it. Find the center of the interfacing by folding it in half. Then place it on the center of the bodice right at the top edge. Begin pinning it in place. Sew a straight line going all the way across the top of the edge, about a fourth of an inch from the edge. That part can be a little tricky. You do wanna go nice and slow. Then we're going to take the tool and fold it over to the back. And we're gonna need to iron that down. When ironing, make sure you are ironing it fabric side up so you don't melt the tool. 
and we need to make small cuts in the material to release the tension. Be careful not to cut the thread. Okay, we are looking pretty neat. I am trying to make sure this in the front doesn't fold over too much. Now we are going to sew it down. You can just do a straight stitch all the way around. However, I'm using a decorative stitch. This one right here, because I feel like it'll be less noticeable if I make a mistake. And I'm sewing very close to the edge. All right, not too shabby. If I really wanted to see that decorative stitching, I could use a contrasting color like white. However, I don't really wanna draw attention to my possible sloppy lines. Tie off the strings and trim them to keep things nice and neat. Now it's time for the sleeves. Remove the pattern. We should have two separate pieces that are mirror images of one another. Turn it over so the good side is facing down. And then we're gonna fold up the bottom just a little and iron that flat. On the good side, sew a decorative stitch or a straight line going across the edge. Because this is so small, I'm gonna pull the strings in the back to help guide it through. Change the machine to a loose stitch. Sew a straight line along the curved side. Tie and knot the strings from the decorative edge. On the side with the loose straight line, I'm going to knot only one end, then pull the other side to make a slight gather. Take the bodice and lay it good side facing up. Fold the sleeve in half to find the center point. Match the fold with the seam in the shoulder. Use pins to secure. Then we're just gonna straighten this little curve area out a little and continue pinning the sleeve and you can just pull the gathering as needed to make it match up. Personally, I find putting on sleeves a little tricky. So I really wanna take my time, sew slow, make sure I am sewing on or past the gathered line and take care to make sure the fabric on the back does not get caught in the stitch. Like right there might be a little bit of a problem. Let's give this a go. Okay, not too bad but I did go way over my line. So my sleeve is gonna be a little shorter than anticipated. If you do make a mistake, you can use a seam ripper to remove the stitches and try again. And we can always sew by hand, just keep the stitches short and close together to get a neat stitch. I have a thing against raw edges. The fraying drives me crazy. So I'm gonna do a zigzag stitch to hold everything together. Once both sleeves have been sewn on, take the back panel, fold it over at the shoulder, and line up those little triangle notches on the sides. Then sew a line from the bottom of the sleeve all the way to the bottom. I know some of you cringe when you see me sew over my pens, and that is because there is a risk that you can break your sewing machine needle or the pin can get pushed down into the machine. If you would like to eliminate that risk, just remove the pin before it goes through. Now that the sides are sewn, we can attach the skirt. Remove the pattern, sew a stay stitch, one eighth of an inch going down the side, across the bottom and up the other side to reduce fraying. So here's the skirt and here's the bodice. I laid the skirt so the good side is facing up and we are going to match up the center of the skirt with the center of the bodice. So we're gonna turn this around, place it on top and match up those creases. Use pins to hold in place. Pin it from side seam to side seam. Then take the ends and pin those together leaving us with excess fabric. So I'm just going to pleat it, making sure to stay away from the very edge. Then sew going all the way across to attach the two pieces. Now let's iron this down so everything is nice and flat. Then fold over the sides and hem it about an inch past the waist using a straight stitch. Now we can try it on a doll. 
There is a nice amount of overlay in the back, so you can totally adjust this to fit a curvy doll. I use a pin to mark where I need to place the Velcro. Cut a piece of Velcro, then cut it in half. Pull the sides apart. On the outside edge, pin one of the pieces of Velcro, then pin the other side where we marked. Sew them in place. Flip the dress inside out, place it on the doll, and pin the back of the dress closed. Sew about an inch from the waist all the way down. Remove the doll, then sew a straight stitch. Then fold up the bottom just a little, and you might want to place it on your doll to get the right uh, length. And then we're going to just sew to hem the bottom of the dress. Very carefully sew a straight line, making sure not to catch any of the fabric that you don't want sewn. Flip it right side out. Uh, it's not laying quite as smooth as I would like in the back. You may have to play around with it a little, but I did say my patterns weren't perfect, so hey. I think I just need to move my Velcro over a little bit, and my mom did say to sew the Velcro on last, so moral of the story. Listen to mom. Okay, now that's a lot better. On my second attempt, we are going to go ahead and sew up the back first by lining up the edges of the skirt and sewing a straight line and stopping about an inch from the waist. Then add the Velcro, then just make a few small stitches to tack it down and it looks pretty decent. If you want to jazz this dress up a little bit, you can try using different fabrics, like ones with a little sheen, or you can even add a layer of tulle. This pattern can fit a curvy Barbie, a classic Barbie, an Integrity Toys doll. It's a little big up top for a Rainbow High doll, so if you're making one for them, a few adjustments may be needed. So whether you're into Bridgerton or Pride and Prejudice, we can now make dresses for all our dolls. Thank you for joining us while we made a few dresses. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at MyFroggyStuff and the Frog Vlog. You can find the pattern for this project on our blog, MyFroggyStuff.blogspot.com. And we will see you next time. Bye! Like a pink, yeah, me. So put your hand in mine. Follow me.